Hi, my name is Lindsay James and um, Lisa Landreth has asked me to share my experience of being in a big earthquake and kind of the things that I learned um, that we can do to be better prepared for earthquakes. Um, in 1994, I was in seventh grade and we lived in California and we had a 6.7 earthquake that lasted about 10 seconds and it was called the San Fernando earthquake. Um, and we were kind of, sorry, I've got my dogs behind me. <laughs> um, we were kind of at the middle of it. It shook pretty hard and it wasn't like a rolling earthquake. It was one that felt like someone just picks up the house and shakes it. Um, people said it sounded like a freight train going through the house. So it, earthquakes are much louder than you would actually imagine. Um, but my experience was this surprisingly enough, um, the night before a friend who wasn't, it, it, it happened on a weekend where we didn't have school on a Monday. And so on Sunday, one of my friends who wasn't a member of the church asked if I could spend the night. And I asked my mom and she's like, you know, I just, I don't really love Sunday sleepovers. She's like, I just, I, I don't feel good about it. And then she came back to me. She goes, you know, what? I think we need to have her at our house. So we invited Lauren to spend the night at our house. And, um, so yeah, she spent the night at our house. And then that night at 4:31 in the morning, the earthquake happened and um crazy enough i slept through most of it which is really strange i'm a light sleeper until i woke up like it must have been the last few seconds and i was confused of what was going on i didn't i didn't recognize that there was shaking i thought somebody was in our house ransacking the house there was just so much noise it sounded like somebody just throwing everything off the shelves and things were shattering everywhere but like i said i woke up near the end so i didn't feel like in here the bulk of it so at the end um so anyway i woke up super confused but scared i knew something scary was happening and i jumped up out of the bed and i hopped over the trundle bed that my friend was sleeping on and i jumped over her ran out in the hallway and my family's there i said what happened what happened and nobody said anything i just noticed my oldest brother going downstairs so i like it was pitch black too which is weird so i'm going by feel um and i followed him down the stairs not realizing that the stairs were full of stuff that had fallen all over. Um, somehow I miraculously made it down the stairs without tripping, went around the corner, and then I tripped on the piano bench and the leg of the piano bench, it, it was upside down, the leg of the piano bench went into my chest and then I cut my knee on the piano bench just a little bit. It wasn't a huge deal, but that's when I stopped in my tracks because my brother had made it to the kitchen and not thinking about a possible gas leak, he lit a match so that he could see. And that's when I was, I realized something terrible happened because the match lit up the kitchen and the kitchen was a complete disaster. I looked around the house and everything was a mess. And I went, oh my gosh, what happened? I went upstairs and my brother goes, we had an earthquake. Kind of like, come on, figure it out. <laughs> so I realized we had an earthquake. I went upstairs very carefully. And this time, um, I was, like I said, I carefully walked around things, went upstairs uh, we gathered our family, we all went outside, and we realized we had to get my friend home. And um, so we got in the car, and there was a huge, our street actually kind of had like a fault line go through it, and so the street had buckled probably like three or four feet high. Luckily, we probably closer to three, but luckily we had a Suburban that we were able to get over that hump to get out of our street. Um, and this was something that was interesting is that I learned is you need to know your city and how to get, get around your city without a bridge. All the bridges had been, had collapsed or were not safe to drive on. Um, and so we had to, my dad had to go a back way to get to my friend's house and take her home. And her sweet parents just burst in tears and said, we were so grateful that she was at your house because if I had slept at my friend's house, um, I usually slept on the floor next to her bed and where I sleep in a sleeping bag on the floor, um, a huge tall dresser had tipped over and landed right where I would have been sleeping. And they were just terrified at the thought that I would have been smashed by the dresser and my friend on her bed, she had a shelf above her bed and all the trophies that she had on her shelf had fallen on her bed. So if she had been home, um, she could have been really hurt by a ton of trophies. Um, falling all over her. She was very talented. She had a lot of trophies. So anyway, um, so it was a big blessing that my mom had listened to the feeling that she had had that we needed to have her over at our house that night. Once we got her home, we barely had any gas and no gas stations were open anywhere near us. And luckily, 
my, um, my dad knew where to go, where there would be gas. So we, um, sorry, I'm outside because that's where it's quiet without my kids, but now the dogs are loud. So anyway, so we had to drive to Palmdale to get gas, which is over an hour away. And, um, that was another lesson. Like all of us that lived around there decided after that, that we would never drive around with less than a half a tank of gas. So a good rule of thumb is to always have a half a tank of gas in your car because um, you never know how far you're going to have to go. So next after that, we came home and the sun was up and because it was dark when it all happened and we got home and we saw what the house looked like and it was terrible. Okay, so we got home and we could see everything that had happened and I something that you can never really explain to somebody is the destruction that an earthquake can do. It's pretty crazy because um, one thing you would never imagine is all the mirrors in your bathrooms that are just mounted to the wall, they were all shattered everywhere, like smithereens, splinters of glass everywhere. Every cupboard in your house is emptied out. There was nothing in the cupboards. Everything was shaken out of the cabinets. The kitchen was full the fridge opened. It opened the fridge and the freezer. I mean, that's how hard it shook. So everything that's in jars in your fridge is all spilled out. All the eggs, all the jam, all the condiments are all sh like all over the floor, everywhere. It's a mess. And um, plates and dishes. And I mean, there's so much glass. And so something that we all took away from it, you have to have shoes by your bed all the time in case of an emergency. And I know people who actually tied them to the leg of their bed so they could like untie them and get them on really fast because really if you're gonna if it's happening at nighttime and you're getting out of your bed afterwards there there's gonna be glass everywhere everywhere it is pretty crazy you would never imagine how much and the second thing we learned is if it happens at night um, I think we've all kind of taken away from it that it's kind of safer to just stay in your bed and um, people who got out of their beds, especially to like go get their kids, often got hurt. They fell, they ran into walls, things fell on top of them. Any piece of furniture that's not mounted to a wall will fall. All the wall units fell, dressers fell, closet doors all came off the hinges and fell, um, or they'd get like stuck all weird. Everything falls. So if there's furniture in a spot where you don't want it to fall, you need to mount it to a wall. Um, and, but the, the main thing, stay in your bed. So make sure your kids' beds, there aren't heavy things hung around their heads so that you know that if there's an earthquake and your kids are in their bed, they're safe so that you can stay in your bed. And I know that's counterintuitive. My mom said she wanted to get up and run. My dad held her the whole time and they just bounced in the bed. And, um, but people who got out of their beds got hurt. Um, one guy that I do know stayed in his bed and it shook so hard that his head went through the wall because he didn't have a headboard. So his head, like he was laying in bed and his head went through the wall. He, the whole day he couldn't figure out why he had a headache till they went back in the house and they found a hole in the wall on the side of his head. <laughs> so um, that was the other thing. Um, the shoes, the gas, obvious, or gas in the car. Obviously we, you need to know where your water and gas shut off is. Um, don't light a match like my brother did. <laughs> Luckily, it wasn't Jared. For those of you who know Jared in our ward, it wasn't him, it was my oldest brother, but um, you have to know where flashlights are. It is so pitch black. It's so crazy when your electricity goes out, how dark it really is. So um, definitely always know where a flashlight is. Um, there are so many other things that I think are standard emergency preparedness things, um, but these were things that we learned specifically from our earthquake. I, I guess one last item is um, water. They, we didn't have water for weeks and weeks and weeks. It was a really, really, really long time. And um, luckily back then we had FEMA that came and they were at the bottom of our neighborhood and we could go down and get water to drink. We had friends that lived about 45 minutes away and so we could go take showers there. And then we had a pool, so we would wash dishes in our pool. But, um, but like you just have to be prepared to not have water. We didn't have electricity for a while or gas. Uh, it was kind of fun because we did find a couple eggs that didn't crack out of the out of the fridge and you know things were gonna go bad so when we got back to our house when the sun was up my brother Sterling pulled out the Coleman camp stove and he cooked up a good breakfast with eggs I think some bacon <laughs> and we had a yummy breakfast because we we had the camp stuff so um sorry this is getting a little bit longer than I anticipated but takeaways 
know your roads, uh, know how to get around and how to get to gas without a bridge. The bridges will be down. Um, have water, have shoes by your bed, have light. Um, definitely don't light a match to see because you don't know about gas lines. We were lucky that we didn't have a leak. Um, stay in your bed. They talk about, they used to talk about getting in a door frame. I wouldn't do that. Uh, your fingers get slammed. The doors swing really hard. I think a hallway is almost better that doesn't have stuff. Um, I'm trying to remember what else I was thinking about. Oh, just mounting things to the wall and just know everything shatters. Like your, all your mirrors will shatter. There will be glass everywhere. Do not walk without shoes. It's pretty crazy. I mean, it took weeks and weeks and weeks to clean up. And then we had to move out of our house for three months and have, um, foundation, uh, not foundation, but like walls. I mean, everything was cracked and ruined. And so we had to have it, have it all fixed. Um, but this experience is why we have earth, earthquake insurance. We had friends that did not have earthquake insurance and they lived in a home for a very long time that should have been probably condemned. And, um, and then they lost their house. They, they didn't have earthquake insurance and didn't have the money to fix it. And so, um, it's a personal choice, but that's kind of what we've chosen to do. Anyway, I'm sure there's so many more stories I could tell, and I feel bad this was supposed to only be five minutes, but this is my experience, and if you have any other questions, feel free to call me. Thanks.